Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. This week I'm bringing you this beautiful French Provincial Desk Makeover. It's a beautiful little desk I found a few days ago. Uh, it's so gorgeous, has beautiful details on it. Uh, if there is one style of furniture I'm crazy about, that is a French Provincial. This desk has this leather on top, uh, but I will be painting it as well. Uh, because Anislon chalk paint sticks to everything. Uh, I'm going to uh, remove the hardware, I'm going to give it a really good clean, and then I will be uh, painting it in a beautiful Svenska blue color. So what I got here is Svenska blue color by Anislon, and this is going to be my main color. Okay. I'm going to give it a stir. I will be using an Islon medium brush. So I'm just going to paint in every which direction and get the first coat on. When using Anislon, you don't have to worry about your paint sticking to this leather area because it definitely sticks to it. I don't have to worry about sticking to this metal here. As you can see, I already painted it. Uh, you can literally put this paint on anything and it will stick uh, onto that surface. So for leather, I suggest you apply thinner coats uh, than thick coats when working on leather. So that's just my little suggestion. I'm here painting the back of this desk because usually I don't paint, paint in the back, but this one uh, looks so pretty even in the back. So I decided to just go and paint everything. And I'm adding my second coat right now. And once that is dry, I'm going to, the um, once the second coat is dry, I'm going to decide in which direction I want to go. Do I want to do some blending or I want to leave it as it is? I'm not sure, but I know that I have to have solid uh, coverage, solid base to continue. So let's see what happens. So I'm going with my second coat here. It's a little thicker usually, that's how I do. My second coat is usually a little thicker than my first, but it's still pretty thin. And as you can see, I'm getting a solid coverage with this one. Now we're going to do the detail work. I am going to mix Anislon pearlescent glaze with a little bit of old white color uh, to create a beautiful uh, glaze, which is not going to be uh, transparent, it's going to be whitish. So here I got pearlescent glaze. You can use it by yourself or you can mix it with any color. And I got here old white and I'm going to just add a touch of this. You don't want to put too much. I got some uh, brushes uh, for detail work and I got a cup where I'm going to mix this. I'm going to give it a little stir to make it even. Look at that, so pretty. And I'm just going to add a little bit first to, to see how it looks. I don't want too much. going to add a little bit of more of glaze. Let's test it out on the piece. Oh yeah, it's pretty. So 
So glaze gives you this beautiful shimmer. Uh, you can use it, as I said, by itself. Uh, it's going to be more transparent, but you can mix it with any color and it's going to give you this shimmery, uh, in my case, white color. And this is what I wanted and this is what I got. I really love it. But just remember, do not put too much of paint when you're mixing it. Uh, the more paint you put, the less uh, shimmery it's going to be. And maybe I will go with another coat after the first one dries. So now I'm going to add some of this mix on the, of this glaze uh, on legs and starting from the bottom, going my way up. I'm not going to go all the way in. I'm just going to look at like a dipped, almost blended look. Very pretty, I love it. It's always fun to play with new products. And this transition here, I'm going to let it dry first and then I'm going to uh, go with uh, Swenska Blue a little bit to blend this a little bit better. It's kind of rough now, but we can fix that once the glaze is dry. I'm done with the first coat and I think that it needs a little bit more. So I'm applying the second coat. It dries pretty quick, so you can just keep on working. Now that my glaze is uh, completely dry, I'm going to get a little bit of paint, just a little bit, you don't want too much. And I'm kind of going to dry brush it into the glaze. And that's it. That will do the trick. For the hardware, I am going to apply two coats of Svenska Blue chalk paint and then I'm going to apply two coats of glaze and it's the same uh, with Anislon you don't have to worry about uh, your paint not sticking to the metal it definitely sticks and it will stay there you can put protection once you're done and you don't have to worry about that it won't chip it's designed and made to stick to literally anything So this area here that was leather before, uh, it's still leather, it's just under the paint. I'm going to use this uh, script stencil by Rizan with Prima. I cut this one because I needed it for the project, so it looks a little weird. I am just going to put it here, like this. And I'm not going to tape this, there is no need to tape, I'm just going to Go over with a sponge brush. Oh boy, that's messy. <laughs> I have to repaint it. So as you can see, I made a huge mess here and that's because I was uh, using way too much glaze and I was uh, just 
that's the problem actually. I was using way too much glaze. I wanted to speed up the process and go faster and I just made a huge mess. And now I have to, instead of speeding up the process, I am slowing down the process. So I have to clean my stencil, uh, clean this stencil that I did and repaint over that surface and then repeat the process all over again. Attempt number two, where I was making a big mistake is that I wasn't unloading my sponge and I uh, think for a moment I forgot that I'm working actually with a paint. Uh, for a second I thought that I'm working with a gilding wax, but I'm not, so I have to unload my sponge. I can't just go directly and I can't believe I was missing that step. So we're going again. <laughs> it's faded. <laughs> It looks faded. I like it. It's faded. It's good. It's faded. We don't have solid coverage. It's faded. <laughs> I think I should give up on this test. <laughs> Here I got a beautiful tissue paper. It's called Lavender Fleur. It's a gorgeous paper and I'm going to put it inside the drawer. Okay, I got here decoupage gel. This one is shine. They come in matte and shine. This is all nice and full and I'm going to put the paper now. It's just a gorgeous paper. It looks so pretty and happy. That looks really good. I put the uh, paper, the tissue paper on the back of the drawer. So, and then I put another coat on top of paper and I'm going to let this dry and I'm going to have a nice drawer inside when you open it. So what I have here is a beautiful transfer. It's called Pure Light Floral. And I'm going to use some parts of this transfer, not everything, just the floral uh, parts. So let's do that. This transfer actually looks much prettier once you open it and you see what is inside. And uh, it comes in three sheets and for this piece I want to use this part here because it has some of the blue that is matching uh, Anislon Svenska blue and then I think pink complements perfectly this uh, color as well as well so that's what we're going to do I'm going to cut this out And when they're connected, you just want to go the closest you can to your flower. And all these leftovers, I always save. You can use them on uh, small projects. You can use them on your hats or anything you want. So just never throw away your leftovers. So let me show you what I have, what I envision for this piece. I want to put that here and it's going to be a little tricky, but I know I can do it. So let's do that. So I decided instead of going this way, I'm going to go this way and apply it like this. So let's do that. I just want to make sure it's straight. So now the hardest part is going to be to wrap this because it's uncomfortable position, but I've done some harder things in my life. I'm 
yay that is so cute that is so pretty i love how it's going together with this piece yay perfect so now let's get this one so i got this part now and i'm going to cut this one here and this one here and then i'm going to put them on the on the corners one here and one i think one here and then i'm going to stencil in the middle i would have used these uh words these letters but they're not uh, reaching all the way it's not long enough so that will look awkward and in that case i prefer to just do my own stenciling with a uh, script stencil so let's first cut these pieces extension and now we're going to put this one on this side Now I'm going to protect everything by using Anislon clear wax and Redesign with Prima waxing brush. And I'm using micro microfiber cloth and to wipe, uh, in actually in some areas I'm applying wax with this cloth where I can reach with a brush. So I'm back with the stencil, <laughs> I won't let it go. Uh, we learned that uh, it didn't work with the glaze. I don't know what I was doing, but obviously whatever I was doing, do not repeat that because you're going to make horrible mistakes. Also, I want to mention that I saw in one of Annie Sloan videos where she used glaze for stenciling and she did it perfect. I will keep practicing and eventually probably I will learn the right way. I decided to go with Decor Wax by Rizan with Prima and this one is called Polaris. It's a shiny, uh, very pretty shade. You will see now how it looks. It's going to give me that nice effect I want and it's the easiest way to stencil, I promise you, this way. There won't be any mistakes, hopefully. I'm going to put some here and then get some on my sponge. That is so pretty. We have some sponge in here, but other than that, it looks good. I like it. I love, love how it came out. You can see it, but you can't see it too much. So I love it. It's very subtle. It's not like uh, too strong. So when you're doing stencil with uh, Decor wax, you don't want to touch it now. Don't touch it, don't do nothing to it. Let it dry for 24 hours. Once 24 hours has passed, you uh, it's completely sealed uh, and you don't have to do anything to it. It will stay there, but just don't touch it first 24 hours. So I'm going to just add another one here. Yeah, 
In my tutorials, I always tell you to tape your stencils, but I never tape my stencils. I am serious. Tape your stencil. Just do it. Do yourself a favor and tape your stencils. Don't do what I do. <laughs> That's looking great. Lovely, lovely. It's not too much. It's just perfect. I love how this came out and it's matching perfectly. Just good thing, so. We succeeded. <laughs> I'm just going to take this decor wax and add it on the white areas. And look at that. It brings some nice shine to this. So I just wanted to add that little adjustment and that will be it. It's done. And we're done with this piece. It's just so gorgeous, feminine, cute. I love it so much. I love this color. It's very pretty uh, shade of blue. I love the glaze that I use. Uh, the transfer is gorgeous as well. It matches this piece perfectly. It looks very pretty when you open it as well because we have this beautiful decoupage paper inside. Uh, I really love this piece. I'm glad that I didn't use any gold uh, because I love gold and I put it on everything, but every once in a while it's good to switch up and try something different and something new, something fresh, so we can keep it interesting. And I really hope you liked this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up, leave a comment below and subscribe if you haven't already. I will see you next time with a new project and more ideas and Blue is eating carton. What, what you got there? Crazy dog. Huh? What you have in there? Recycling, working hard, working really hard. <laughs>